In this lesson, we will learn about how human factors affect the performance of aviation maintenance technicians. It is not all-inclusive of everything we need to know on the subject. Additional information can be found in Chapter 14 of 8083-30, the Aviation Maintenance Technician's General Handbook. Approximately 75 to 80 percent of all aviation accidents are the result of human error. Of those accidents, about 12 percent are maintenance related. In this lesson, we will achieve a better understanding of those human factors that can lead to errors in aviation maintenance and how we can reduce or eliminate these errors. A lot of times it's easier to remember something by using a mnemonic. That's an easy to recall word where each letter represents another word. I want to offer you a mnemonic that will help you recall four words that capture the most important human factors concepts. I may be guilty of oversimplification, but a lot of people say to keep it simple. Dagmar, what do you think of when I say pear? Well, I, I think of a, a greenish yellow fruit that tastes really sweet when you can find one ripe. It seems like they're hard to find in grocery stores. Right. I think most people would have the same idea and the same complaint about pears in the grocery store. But I suggest that you take the word pear and let the letters represent the four key things that you would consider in a human factors program. I started to use the pear concept with Dr. Mike Maddox in the early 90s. We were trying to be sure that the international client at that time would remember the primary human factors principles once the class was over. We felt that existing models were abstract, they were hard to recall, and not matched to maintenance. All right, enough history, Dr. Bill. Exactly what does P-E-A-R stand for? P stands for people. If you're going to address human factors, you have to know about the workers or about the humans that are going to use the products. You must pay attention to the many physical and psychological factors that affect how people are prepared to do their job. Dagmar, can you think of a people issue? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can think of at least two categories of people issues, mental and physical. Mental or psychological issues could include attitude, aptitude, knowledge, the amount of training and experience, and the general mental fitness for duty. Now the physical issues, those can include any such thing as um, gender, size, strength, vision, physical fitness, and more. Now, that's an excellent answer. Uh, by the way, some call the study of uh, physical human factors ergonomics, but it's generally okay to interchange the terms. However, the term human factors is more widely used. The next one is E for environment. Ah, now that one is easy. Hot, cold, wet, dry, light, dark. Now those are environmental issues. Well, you're 50% correct on that one. You described the physical environment. That's the easy one to address with proper clothing, with heating, venting, ventilation, and cooling systems, or by adding proper lighting for the task. The other environment is called the socio-technical environment. Now, that's a fancy term for issues like management, labor cooperation, establishment of a safety culture, company profitability, job security, and more. Of course, this environment is tougher to measure and to maintain uh, than the physical environment. However, they're both important. So the next letter in pair is A, which stands for actions. What are we talking about there? I guess that means to look at the specific actions that people do at work, like the objectives of the job. What are the many tasks that are necessary to complete the job? Are the tasks completed, are they one at a time, or can many go on in parallel? I mean, there must be at least a million things to consider in each action. Yeah, that million estimate, it's a good one. It's an interesting number. Uh, once you identify the actions and break them into tasks, 
then you define the skills, the number of people needed, the types of equipment and tools, and the performance standard to determine what's the acceptable quality uh, and safety. So actions is yet another important part of human factors planning. The last letter is R for resources. What do you think we mean by that one? Hmm. All right, let's see. The P stands for people. The E is for the environment where the people work, and A stands for the actions that they perform. So the resources would include having and using technical manuals, tools, other coworkers, enough time to complete the job, and enough training, on and on and on. I mean, I guess it would even include the company's ability to pay a fair wage with good benefits and to retain a qualified and happy workforce. Another excellent answer. As you start listing resources, it's hard to avoid talking about the other letters in PEAR. It all ties together, and that's why PEAR is an excellent way to think and talk about human factors issues. Depending on the amount of time available, this presentation may go deeper into the many aspects that can be included in the PEAR. Talk about the P's, the E's, the A's, and the R's in your workplace. Human error is defined as a human action with unintended consequences. Human errors cannot be eliminated, but they can be managed. Unintentional errors can include errors in one's actions, opinions, or judgment caused by poor reasoning, carelessness, or poor judgment. An example of an unintentional error would include misreading a given torque value as 24 foot-pounds rather than 24 inch-pounds. Intentional errors would occur when one purposely deviates from safe practices, procedures, standards, or regulations. In such instances, the aviation maintenance technician has most likely violated company policy and or Federal Aviation Administration regulations. An act of error is one where a action results in a foreseeable event, such as when a mechanic falls from a ladder when he or she knew beforehand the ladder was defective. A latent error occurs when a defective ladder is left in service when it was known it should have been replaced. Due to a large number of maintenance-related aviation accidents and incidents that occurred in the late 1980s and early 1990s, Transport Canada identified 12 human factors that degrade people's ability to perform effectively and safely, which could lead to maintenance errors. These 12 errors, known as the Dirty Dozen, were eventually adopted by the aviation industry as a straightforward means to discuss human error in maintenance. The Dirty Dozen is now a cornerstone of human factors in maintenance training courses worldwide. The Dirty Dozen refers to 12 of the most common human error preconditions or conditions that act as precursors to accidents or incidents. These 12 elements influence people to make mistakes. The Dirty Dozen list has increased awareness of how humans can contribute towards accidents and incidents, so the focus of attention and resources can be put towards reducing and capturing human error. In subsequent slides, we will learn more about each of the 12 factors listed in the Dirty Dozen and countermeasures to mitigate them. The Aviation Maintenance Technician will communicate regularly with a number of people in the performance of his or her duties. Management, pilots, part suppliers, and aircraft servicers will all be part of that group. But communication between AMTs may be the most important of all. This is especially true when more than one AMT is performing a procedure on an aircraft at the same time. It is critical that accurate, Complete information be exchanged to ensure that all work is completed without any step being omitted. A common scenario where communication is critical is during shift change. A partially completed job is transferred from the technician finishing his or her workday to the technician coming on duty. 
Any lack of communication at this point may result in required steps or operations not being performed before the aircraft is returned to service. It is crucial that the offgoing and oncoming technicians participate in a thorough briefing to ensure that both parties fully understand what steps or procedures in an unfinished task have been completed and what actions still need to be accomplished. A brand new AMT is likely to follow established procedures and regulations, but for some, as they gain experience, they develop a sense of false confidence. If they have performed the same inspection repetitively without finding a fault, they may make the assumption that the inspection of that item is not important. The consequence is that one of the times that the inspection is ignored, a fault is overlooked, leading to an incident or accident. Routine tasks that are performed repeatedly can also result in the technician's mind starting to wander, resulting in him or her skipping steps in a process or overlooking items of concern in an inspection. Failing to document work performed or documenting work not performed are also signs of complacency. To combat complacency, the technician should expect to find a fault in every inspection, stay mentally engaged, meticulously follow checklists and approved procedures, do not sign for work that has not been completed, and know for certain what you are signing off on. A lack of knowledge required to perform a specific task can result from a lack of experience, a lack of the up-to-date approved instructions or data, a lack of understanding of the instructions or data required for the task. To avoid the potential catastrophic consequences that may result from not having the knowledge or experience necessary to properly complete a repair, the technician should obtain training on the types of aircraft and systems he or she is working on, ensure they possess the most current instructions or data for performing the task, make sure they fully understand the instructions. If in doubt about how to perform a task, a technician with experience on the aircraft should be consulted. If one is not available, a manufacturer's technical representative should be contacted. It is better to delay a maintenance procedure than to do it incorrectly and cause an accident. It is estimated that 15% of maintenance-related errors are caused by distractions. Distractions can result from a wide variety of causes such as a phone call, personal issues occupying the technician's mind, or being pulled from one task before it is completed to assist with another. When resuming a task after being distracted, it is a good practice to go back three steps in the work procedure from when the distraction occurred and resume the job from that point. Using a detailed step-by-step -step written procedure and signing off each step only after it is completed also helps. Flag or tag any work left incomplete when the disruption occurred. When a step in the maintenance procedure is complete, be sure to immediately lock wire or torque the fasteners as required. Disconnect any connector and leave it plainly visible if an installation is not complete. Teamwork is everyone understanding and agreeing on actions to be taken and is closely associated with communication. It can also be defined as everyone working together for a common objective. Most maintenance on the aviation fleet occurs overnight when the aircraft are not being flown to generate revenue. This requires that many aviation maintenance personnel work overnight during the hours that their circadian rhythm has degraded their performance and contributed to fatigue. Fatigue primarily results from a lack of quality sleep and can negatively affect one's cognitive ability, decision-making, reaction time, coordination, speed, strength, and balance. While caffeine and other drugs may hold fatigue at bay for a short period of time, they may prevent one from getting the required sleep later. Chronic fatigue can also have serious effects on one's long-term health. 
The best remedy for fatigue is to get enough sleep on a regular basis. Monitor your sleep habits, stay hydrated, and recognize the symptoms of fatigue in yourself and others. A list of the resources required to maintain an aircraft or fleet include the tools required to complete the task, the proper replacement parts, up-to-date technical manuals, and the personnel including maintenance and flight crews. Ensuring that necessary resources are available before initiating any maintenance procedure requires confirming that the needed tools are accessible, properly maintained, and calibrated. Verifying that necessary replacement parts are on hand, the technical manuals are available and up to date, and that the personnel have the needed experience and training to accomplish the task. AMTs regularly face pressures to complete a task or inspection quickly to meet a flight schedule and to avoid lost revenue. At the same time, the job must be completed with the utmost safety in mind. If a technician feels pressure to complete a task within a time frame that may compromise safety, the technician should consider seeking additional help. They might also consider having another technician thoroughly check the repair to ensure it was done correctly. And lastly, if a technician believes that a time limit on a repair is unrealistic or compromises safety, bring it to the attention of a supervisor or manager to openly discuss a different course of action. Assertiveness is the ability to express your feelings, opinions, beliefs, and needs in a positive, productive manner and should not be confused with being aggressive. Technicians cannot afford to be passive and fail to communicate concerns they have regarding repairs or procedures that may affect safety. This failure may lead to serious accidents or loss of lives. Do not allow a more forceful personality to coerce you into compromising on issues of safety. Stress has been defined as a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. There are many factors which may stress the aviation maintenance technician, including the requirement to complete maintenance in very short time frames to avoid flight delays, rapidly changing technology, and working hours and conditions. Stress affects people in different ways. A situation which stresses one individual in one way may not affect another person. Stressors can generally be classified as physical, psychological, or physiological. Examples of physical stressors include temperature, hot or cold working environments can fatigue the body and distract the mind, noise, which can affect focus and concentration, lighting, Poor lighting can affect the ability to read maintenance manuals or cause a technician to miss inspection items. Confined spaces can cause distracting discomfort and make it difficult to physically perform a certain task. Some examples of psychological stressors include work-related issues, financial problems, marital problems, interpersonal problems with co-workers and supervisors. Physiological stressors include illness, lack of proper nutrition, lack of sleep, changing sleep habits due to a shift schedule. Some recommendations to help mitigate the effects of exposure to stressors include plenty of rest and exercise, a healthy diet, and limited use of alcohol and tobacco products. Lack of awareness is defined as a failure to recognize all the consequences of an action or lack of foresight. Lack of awareness can also be thought of as a lack of paying attention. Stop and think before you act and make a conscious effort to remain situationally aware. Norms are the commonly accepted work practices within an organization. 
They are unwritten rules that are followed or tolerated by most organizations. When a newer employee observes a more senior member perform a task in a particular manner, he or she may assume that because the more senior employee is completing the task in this manner, that this is the way things are supposed to be done. And as time goes on, more employees see how this task is accomplished by others and assume that is correct method for accomplishing that task, and that method then becomes the normal for that organization. Instead, each employee should ensure that they are following standard operating procedures and not simply mimicking the performance of others. If I am completing a task as I witnessed another accomplish it, and they were wrong in how they got it done, then I am also wrong. 